Well, the next time you're filling out a form and you have to list your occupation, imagine being able to write professional treasure hunter. Mm. Well, that's the case for Lee Webber, an Aussie surfer and larrikin who travels the globe metal detecting and magnet fishing to uncover lost and forgotten artefacts. Yes, from relics of a bygone era to modern jewels and gadgets, Lee shares his underwater adventures with his 1.2 million followers online. Take a look. I get excited about the stupidest things when I'm treasure hunting. Look at that! <laughs> Good to see the audio on those GoPros underwater still works, captures the excitement of the moment, and the Bondi treasure hunter is currently in Amsterdam. So we're going to cross live to Lee Webber now. Hello from Amsterdam. Uh, now listen, you're hunting for treasure. <laughs> you're a modern day pirate of sorts. Could get a little parrot on your shoulder perhaps. But how do you get into this line of work? And, and what's it like when you have to fill out your passport form and put that <laughs> on as your profession? Yeah, what, <laughs> what am I doing here in this country? Uh, treasure hunting? No, I don't yeah. do that. I, um, yeah, I just got into treasure hunting because, uh, you know, the pro surfer job was filled at the time. So I went for the treasure hunter and um, just started filming as, my, as I've traveled around the world searching for different stuff. And it's just amazing what people lose. Um, so I go everywhere, like metal detecting or scuba diving. Here in Amsterdam, I go scuba diving in the canals and you never know oh. what you're going to find in there because there's just so much, so much history and it's muddy. So once it's been dropped in there, you can just never tell what's going to pull out. Yeah, yeah, wow. Is it a case of finders keepers? I mean, some of the stuff on the table there, the old uh, cheap sunglasses from Bangkok we can leave behind. But there's cheap some great, sunglasses, what are you talking about? <laughs> there's some great looking stuff. Is it finders keepers? What if you happen across something that's actually really yeah. valuable and culturally sensitive? What happens? Well, in England, for example, they have a treasure law. So if you find something over there, you have to report it to the coroner within two weeks and then it goes into a treasure process and that allows the museums to bite off you first and to, to give you an example if you go metal detecting in the fields and you find something amazing then the farmer will get half and you'll get to keep half as well uh, but it will go to a museum and they'll bite off you so you can strike it rich doing this and uh, also preserve and find history so it's yeah. really cool for things like that there's been some amazing finds my friend He's found a 400,000 pound treasure metal detecting in the fields of England. So wow. hopefully one day. And, <laughs> wow. and I can see there's a picture of you on a motorbike. I mean, uh, where was that? that? That was actually in Amsterdam. I got my oh. magnet stuck and called the police and the police come along with their boat and crane and pulled my rope up and there was a BMW motorbike on the end of it. So I was like, you, you just never know what's down there. It's just so That was cool. just someone trying to find a good park. Because <laughs> it is hard to park in it's Amsterdam. Everyone's on those park over bikes. Here. <laughs> or a stunt gone wrong for the last Bond film they were filming there. <laughs> what happens, so what happens to that motorbike? So the motorbike is of no particular value, for instance, right? So what happens when you bring up a big piece like that? What do you do with it? Well, in that case, my friend Ramon, he makes metal artworks out of the things we find out of the canal, like the rusty stuff. So I begged him to take that back to his, uh, his place and uh, build an artwork out of it, which he did, but he almost got kicked out of his studio because it stank so much. Yeah. But it did end up going to a motorbike tour company here in the Netherlands. So it sits out the front of their, their office and is an advertisement to go on a motorbike tour. <laughs> not the best advertising. No. <laughs> yeah, not really, but yeah, it's more like Pirates of the Caribbean or something. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. this is, what you're detecting, thing, you must have a really big magnet, so to speak. It's not like just how to pick up some of the <laughs> do that. Yeah, that came out magnet. wrong. What I'm <laughs> saying is a big magnet to detect things underwater. Like what kind of um, equipment Strength, is it? How strong is it? Larry's just looking at you going, what Larry, are you talking about? You. It's a very strong magnet, yeah, it's, it's very strong. It can pull scooters and motorbikes out of the canal. I've actually broken my finger, it got stuck between another magnet, so they're super strong, you've got to be careful with them. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they're, they're not okay. your regular fridge magnet, that's for sure. I feel like I'm watching a bumble conversation. <laughs> Have you found anything so valuable that you can kind of hang up the metal detector and just retire? Uh, no, mate, unfortunately not. I'm not retired yet, but that's what keeps me going. I found a lot of things worth thousands of dollars, but not hundreds of thousands of dollars. So, you know, it's out there, though. It's yeah, still amazing know. stuff gets gone every day. 
Um, but, you know, for me, I'm happy just finding the smaller stuff, a pair of sunglasses, a couple of bucks on the beach. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't matter for me. I just enjoy the search and going to the different places around the world and, you know, diving in rivers, exploring new places and hopefully finding like a souvenir to take home with me as well. Well, over the years, I've lost so much stuff at Bondi. I've lost my, my keys, my money, my that. dignity. I've lost everything <laughs> yeah. at Bondi so many times. Um, you've helped reunite. Uh, oh, sorry. What I was going to ask you is when, when you're back in Australia, what about something like, like do you do much around Sydney Harbour or because there'd be, you'd think a treasure trove or is that sort of done? Uh, mate, Larry, I can't tell you my spots because you're a Bondi local. But yes. yeah, I do, uh, I do, <laughs> do hunt a lot around the eastern suburbs. That's where it all began for me. That's how I started my YouTube channel, Bondi Treasure Hunter, because yeah. I was, you know, surfing yeah. in Bondi and and treasure hunting at the beach and finding jewellery and things like that underwater with my metal detector, and I just kept going with it and going with it and. Um, and so I started in that area and it just took me around the world. So I've been to Thailand and since built a camper van where I travel around Europe every summer these days and wow. uh, just go to all sorts of different countries Fair and uh, treasure hunt everywhere. There is a fair bit of trash in the Sydney's eastern suburbs, but also turns oh, yeah. out some treasure at times too. Um, <laughs> people often lose jewellery. I've lost a, a ring, which I might, when you come back, just see if you can find somewhere yeah. when I was on no a worries. ferry ride in Sydney Harbour. But do you ever reunite? <laughs> it's a long sorry. story. Yeah, sorry. It's one of those stories. There was sunscreen involved. I don't want you to think there was something like it wasn't some booze <laughs> cruise. It was, I had lots of sunscreen on my hands and I flung it. I was excited and the, anyway. Yeah. So just the brief for you, <laughs> it's somewhere between Circular Key and Man. Manly. Yeah. It was a really yeah, lovely okay. day. I'll dive there with the sharks and get it for you. That's no do worries. you reunite really people lot, with, so. their, with their jewels ever? Yeah, absolutely. People oh, lose nice. a lot of stuff just like that. Sunscreen and, and swimming in the water. Rings just yeah, come off and it's do. really common. And it's what you're watching now seconds. is a ring that I found in Amsterdam. So people, um, I volunteer with a group over here where we go searching for people who've lost rings and sentimental items and things like that. So we'll go scuba diving with metal detectors in the canals of Amsterdam and manage to find a gold ring out of all the trash and bicycles wow. and Coke cans that are down there. So wow. we do return a lot of rings, which is awesome. Even GoPros that I find or any other things that I can get an ID or a face on, I put mm. it on my social media page and. It's amazing how many people we can track down. That's wow. amazing. Well, when you get home, why don't you get, get your magnet out, look for Sally's ring and uh, my dignity down at Bondi. We've got some jobs for <laughs> you when you get back. I don't think anyone's going to find that, mate. No, long oh. gone, long gone, <laughs> long gone. Many storms yeah. ago. Mm. Uh, good to see okay. you. This is fascinating stuff. Thanks see you for soon. That. Thanks for having me, guys. Bye -bye.